Hi. Hey Dave. Hello. Hey, Aloha. Yeah. <laughs> and seeing you yeah. great too, man. So Shaka for you, brother. God bless. And uh great that Say we Say what? Sorry. This I is the Shaka. It means. Oh, it means uh means like uh hang loose. It's like a when people greet each other in Hawaii, it's just like a common thing to to, to say. It's like, "Hey brother, good to see you." <laughs> okay. Everyone will do it to it's each other. It's good to see. You. Let's go to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Let's surf. Man, yeah, no, uh, I I would like to go back to Hawaii one day. How long has it been so since? Uh, how long has it been? I've been several times, but uh, oh my goodness, I don't even want to think how many years it is. A long time. Many, many decades. Anyway, yeah, well, this is an exciting, yeah. exciting time for you. The Montreux years, which uh, you actually curated and compiled uh, yourself. This is an incredible one. I've actually been pouring over this, and you know what else is cool is, and I'm sure you've already realized because of the documentation of this historic stuff you can also go on to things like youtube and watch some of it and and learn a little mm -hmm. bit more and uh so before we get into the record just to make sure you still joining us from monaco same thing you're at your house your beautiful house there and have, have you traveled yes. at all since the pandemic um well that's since early 2020 um all the tours disappeared um, and then all the tours disappeared in 21 and we, we ended 22 with, with, uh, hopes that, uh, a tour of Germany in mm. March would happen. But, uh, just, I just heard about four days ago that it's been postponed, not oh. canceled, uh, postponed, but until, oh, when was it like? October wow. 2023. Wow. I, mean, it's, I saw those it's like dates. In about 20 months from now. Right. right. Oh, 23? That's when it's been? Yes. Yeah, yeah. October 23. No, but everything's, everything's weird. Because it's not everything that's been canceled, but things get uh, shunted around and postponed and put here, put there, but then they get canceled again. So it's, <sighs> it's all messy. You know, but I'm just one of millions. Uh, wow, though, that's inc through it. that's incredible, though. Postpone until the fall of 23. And so you have done a few select performances. But other than that time on your bike when you got in trouble when you went into France by accident, have you left Monaco at all since this thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that's, uh, I mean, not too far. We, uh, although we, we did, we took a holiday, my wife and I, about a month ago to Tenerife, oh. Tenerife, which is the island. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a Spanish island, right. but very nice. Um, and then last week, uh, it was our son who works in London, uh, he had a few days off. So we went to a place called Lenzerheide in Switzerland, oh. where there was really deep snow. It was really beautiful wow. with the forest and the mountains and the air, so good. I mean, it was pretty high that Lenzerheide is 1,500 meters. What's this about? Yeah, like uh, 4,500 feet or something. 4,500 feet, yeah. yeah. Wow. So those are the two major trips that you've done, uh, except for that bike trip <laughs> when you got the ticket that time. I got busted. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's and, and, to, and to add insult to injury, it was, you know, one of the both two young cops in the car <clears throat> pulled me over. And one of them said, well, maybe I should think, you know, but I mean, you could, you're as old as my grandfather, you know, maybe I should, you know, but hey, the law is the law. <laughs> <laughs> so 135 euros was that 150 bucks almost yeah <laughs> what a comment <laughs> no no they stopped they stopped i mean it was just a money making machine they made a lot of money on on that yeah they they did that's a funny uh, story but the uh, you know the attitude was was very different in in early 2020 uh especially i don't know about america but in europe it was it was fearful hmm. You know, and the, the 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 rules and regulations were draconian, and and very much, uh, you know, held to. It's uh, you know, you you do the you do the crime, you do the time, you know, basically. Only you don't do the time; you just pay the money. Um, but uh, the thing is, I haven't stopped working, and you no, know, we do live in a lovely place because we're by the sea. Huh. 
and behind us we've got the mountains nice so you know it's pretty much like hawaii you've got mountains and you've got the ocean no really i mean if i remember i believe you can it get quite high i think in hawaii can't you when sure. you go up one of the volcanoes yep thirteen thousand feet is the uh uh, yeah. the the top height now i'm sure it's a great description and it's nice thank you for doing that for radio because for radio people to describe it in visual terms like that is really useful and um as you know storytelling just goes so far so it's great to imagine your beautiful place there which uh, how long has it been now that you've lived there oh uh, this will be my 40th year living there in that uh in monaco yeah yeah unbelievable yeah i moved here in 82 and uh and here I am, and I'm still 49. Yes, you and are, and you look great, brother. You for the 45th time, <laughs> <laughs> you look great. Anyway, I'm very happy about about this about this recording. Um, you know, and in a way, when people start doing these kind of historical compilations, right? You think, well, you know, well, yeah, you know, is uh, this old timer? You know. <laughs> But uh, I don't feel I don't feel that at all. I feel uh, I'm very happy about it because of the um, the kind of musical and historical part of it. Mm. You know, uh, I mean, the, well, the record speaks for itself because, um, in a way, it, it, it gives an indication, not the complete picture, but it gives a pretty good indication of the different genres that 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 I am so fascinated by in music. Right. And of course, the outstanding musicians who, with who I've been playing. I mean, this is, um, this is wonderful. It's a really kind of, I'm happy that, because these performances, uh, apart from, I think that some of them were released maybe 20, 25 years ago, but in a very limited way, because the, the founder of, Montreux. Have you ever have you ever been to Montreux? No, I haven't. No, it's it's you would like it. It's beautiful. It's on Lake Geneva, with the mountains, and it's 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 really it's got a micro it's got a Mediterranean microclimate there. Wow. It's beautiful. Wow. And the founder Claude Nobs. Um, uh, we go back to 1971. The first time I played that. That's a long time ago. That's that's over 50 years now, Dave. Yeah. Um, but they, that was with the first Mahavishnu, but they didn't record that. Um, they started, I think, probably around 72, or maybe they did exceptional recordings, but now they, they I mean, since I think the early 70s, they record everything. I mean, they've got, they've got hundreds, thousands of hours in their vaults. And that's another thing I'm very happy about because they're releasing uh, this group, that working with BMG and the Montreux people. Um, I think they, they didn't they release something from Nina Simone? I mean, what what, what a artist she is. That's that's a um, cool thing about Muddy these. Waters, you know, right. I mean, un, unheard performances. And, and so that's basically what, what, we, what, we, what we've got on the Montreux album from these different groups. So when you went to make the selection, you kind of, you mentioned it, John started playing there uh, long before this collection, basically. The first ones on this are from 1978, uh, and then they go forward from there. And so what went into making the selections? Because as you've indicated, you started playing there long before that um, with Mahavishnu. You were there with Shakti several different times. You went on to be there all through the years. So many other amazing artists also there on on those kind of bills what made you pick these particular shows and songs as opposed to the wider range or is it also a fact that they weren't all recorded so that's you're limited by that too no everything's pretty much everything's recorded okay um, but uh, and no the in fact the group the the team behind the album mm -hmm. uh, and i have to say they're doing a fantastic job they were very active uh, working with me in the selection of the, there were there were some particular um, uh, performances that they really wanted, you know. And so I went through I went through all of the their choice, and then I sent them my choice. Mm. And uh, and sometimes it would be the same. I would say the same concert of performance that they chose, but with a different song. Or a different piece, mm. 
but we always saw eye to eye and they're, they're really i mean they're, they're with the from the point of view of the 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 engineer who because don't forget he had he had to work with just stereo mixes that's that's not easy right i mean not okay, multi-tracks you're saying no multi-tracks no no i mean i i think he did an astounding job really i mean when you think of this it's it's because you know if the bass is too loud or the bass is too quiet what it's not always easy just to eq the low frequencies you know because you know right. if you eq the low frequencies out of everybody or compression or whatever other tools right it's a, there's a lot of limitations yeah. So he did. He did a really good job. I think they did a great job on the cover. I don't. Know if, did you get the cover? Yeah, I've been looking at it, listening to it. I have the actual mm. cover. It's very oh, cool good. looking. Yeah, I've been. Very I, good. And I see about there's some of it on. Uh, like basically, uh, I've been listening to it digitally, but I have all of it. And so there's uh, extra performance that comes on that vinyl too. It's being released mm. in in vinyl for people who want that as well. So yeah, I've been totally blown away by it just by trying to figure out how you would pick these songs. And you explained it really well. When you think of those shows, uh, like dialing back to 78, for example, that's the first year that's included on this new yeah. Montro years. What's a great story or memory from, if you, if you can remember that year showing up there? I know you did a jam session with Billy Cobham. According to their official website, that was part of your experience, if that helps to jog your memory of what happened in 78. But if you have any other cool memories of that one. I have to put the record straight because I have I have a very close association with Montreux. Okay. Because from 1971, when I first met Claude, Claude okay. Nobbs. Claude, before he founded this festival, which lasted one day, I think it was in 67 to 68, one night, he, you know, uh, he was one of the greatest chefs in Switzerland. <laughs> yeah, I know. But what a passion he had for, for music, jazz, blues, mm -hmm. R&B, basically black American music, mm. you know. And, and he had this passion, and this passion ended up affecting the the economic situation of switzerland can you imagine that because montreux became gigantic yeah. but he was a very special person and we became very dear friends um i in fact he almost talked me into moving there about oh geez must have been around 19 19 76 77 yeah already in the mid 70s uh no but i stayed i stayed in new york i i, I love new york uh, <laughs> anyway um but the thing about montreux is it's you know my wife and i we really like we hike we really like hiking yeah. we like the mountains we yeah. like walking in the mountains and uh behind montreux there's some fantastic hiking. I mean, beautiful. And for example, you, you go up about two thousand meters, and you know you come to the to the. It's not the summit, but there's a, there's a valley up. There's a very high valley up. There's beautiful green in the mountains in the back. But there's a kind of um, cabana, and it's a little it's kind of shack restaurant <laughs> where they've got this rough bread, you know, and cheese. And this green wine that doesn't travel that comes from there and so you get to the top you know and you're ready for a little refreshment and you know so we we, we get pieces of bread and cheese with this green wine and we get set up for the walk down you know and in the evening because i've been going there for, it's part of my life yeah. uh, dave it's really very much uh part of my life this associate i had with claude i mean when we lost him i was really i was devastated um, but, uh, of course there, there are so many concerts there are, I meet so many friends there and, and we, you know, we're kind of VIPs, so we can see any show we want. We can go walk in there, walk in there because there are so many, there's so much going on there. Yeah. If ever you want to take a music holiday, <laughs> go to, no, really the thing is it's been down since COVID. I should have played already in 21. Uh, no, in 20, cancelled. 21, cancelled. And maybe, maybe um, I might play in July. But the thing is, we as a family, because it's right in the middle of July, it's holiday season, 
we'd go anyway. <laughs> you know, and if I, even if I wasn't playing because of the hiking, because of the friends, and sometimes the jam, and just, you know, it's a beautiful place to hang out. I mean, people come from all over the world, actually, to, to Montreux. It's outstanding. So this connection is personal. Mm. It's it's really a personal connection. And, and I'm very happy that the team who are working on this album uh, are part of that affection, you know, in the history of Montreal, because it's such a fabulous history. It really is. When you mentioned seeing all the other bands and stuff there, when you just, and not that you'd remember the years, but just, are there particular either times of seeing other people that you admire, whether it's like a Buddy Guy or Muddy Waters, or sitting in with people throughout the years, either or, that just are fun to remember, put a good smile on your face, remind you of some of these great memories of that place. They'd sound good. These stories would sound good as part of your uh, your radio package. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that's good. It's yeah. It's, it's that uh, we have stories. I mean, and some, some outstanding concerts. Miles, of course, uh, Muddy Waters. Uh, um, oh, we saw Prince too. That was that was outstanding with this all gold band. Wow. That was. Yeah, and, and I'd always wanted to see him because I, I was always a fan of Prince. Um, but, you know, the great the singers, Al Jarreau, Chaka Khan, um, I mean, you name the bands uh, f from all over America. I mean, Weather Report, Chick is there, Keith Jarrett, um, and uh, people from even Latin American bands, uh, Milton Nascimento. Yeah, I mean, and the, and I remember this one concert where Phil Collins, um, who lives near Montreux, by the way, and he did a concert with the Detroit, the kind of the Muscle Shoals band. Huh. Remember the Muscle Shoals? Sure, sure. I mean, the, the ones who are in a lot of those um, Motown recordings. And he did a show seeing all those hits, and it was outstanding, really was. It was, it was uh, a real, you know, once in a lifetime, really. You know, you get to see that. And you played with some of these cats you mentioned. You mentioned Chick. Now, didn't you play there with Chick in 1981? You did a thing there with Chick. You have any memories that stick? We out? did a duo yeah. concert there. Yeah. I know, and the and the duo with Paco. That right. some of it's on the album. Exactly, too. 87. Yeah, Shakti a number of times. Um, uh, the different Mahavishnu orchestras. Yes. Uh, the heart of things, yes, uh, yeah. they're all there. Yeah, they're no, all there. 1974 was an interesting year when you played there. You had Narada Michael Walden on drums, John Luponti on violin, and you know who else was on that same bill that year? Buddy Guy, Junior Wells, Muddy Waters, Sonny Rollins, Milton Nascimento. They all played that year in '74. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. You're right. I was on their yeah, website. because I love Milton. I, I remember because it was Wayne Schroeder who introduced me to Milton Nascimento, you know, and his music, you know, lovely. And Sonny Rollins, you know, I'm a fan since, since forever, since I discovered him in the 60s. But those, the R&B bands, you know, and to see Muddy Waters, who, because Muddy, Muddy Waters is very, very important, significant in the sense that you know what? I started. I started uh, p piano at eight. I actually started violin with my mother, who was an amateur violinist. I think you know that. Mm -hmm. And and she tried to teach me violin, and I, I just got the most awful sound. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I said, you know, I'm really I'm dying here. <laughs> and uh, can you can you let me start on the piano? So she did. You know and. Um, and so I started the piano. I did four years of piano before the guitar came uh, <clears throat> when I was about 11. And because of Elder Brothers, you know, the blues boom hit the UK around 1952. I had two brothers at university and they came home with these blues albums. And the first one was Muddy Waters. And so, I'm, you know, I'm growing up playing. My mother was a classical violin player. I'm only hearing classical music my whole life. I'm, I'm playing Mozart and I'm playing Beethoven. And all of a sudden, and I fall in love with the guitar. Next thing I hear is Muddy Waters playing this acoustic slide. 
It's hard. I mean, yeah, it was like it's 1953 recording, a long time ago. Yeah. Little Walter on, on, on blues harp, you know, and he's singing all, he's already singing the, the great hits, Hoochie Coochie Man, you know, and I'm thinking, what is he doing? What is this music? Unbelievable. You know, and that, and Muddy will always occupy a verse because he really opened that door and let me in to that marvelous world of Mississippi blues, you know. And in fact, when I heard Jimmy for the first time, Hendrix, mm. I realized how big an effect Marty had had on, on Jimmy and his singing in particular. Mm. His guitar playing, he was a revolutionary. Jimmy just, he put the guitar world on his head, including me. <laughs> The singing, the singing was right out of Muddy's book. Did you get a chance because of being on that bill and maybe others that I don't know about throughout uh, your life when he was still alive? Did you get a chance to ever both meet him or to tell him about sort of the impact he had on your your di entire direction of your life? Uh, no, uh, we uh, we met a couple of times. Oh, you once did meet. Okay. In the studio, in the Electric Ladyland studio in '69, uh, because um, you're talking about Jimmy or Muddy? Uh, Jimmy Hendrix. And Jimmy. I, I was, oh, I was Muddy asking. Waters? No, I never met him. Okay. No, no. I mean, in the in, in the entourage, basically, uh, you know, we'd be in the in the big hall, in the in the, the Stravinsky Hall, and. Uh, you know, it's yes, you could go backstage, but uh, lots it. of people there. I get so, it. So, you know, I don't want to bug anybody, but uh, I never got to meet him personally. No. But back to but, Jimmy. You can talk about the Jimmy, which is very important. What's with your Jimmy memories? That's yeah, different? because, well, it's because of, uh, you know, in the early 60s, I was playing with a band called Georgie Fame of the Blue Flames. Right. And, and I left that band to play with Graham Bond uh, organization, which was with Ginger Baker and Jack Bruce. Yeah. And and then Mitch Mitchell came in and was playing drums with Georgie Fame. So we would run into each other. And then and and when I started to play with Tony, I mean Mitch was the, was the greatest, biggest fan of Tony. And every time we were playing, I mean at that time in '69. Uh, we were playing basically slugs on uh, down in the East Village or the Vanguard. Uh, we did a lot of the Vanguard also, sometimes at the Village Gate. But wherever we were, and Mitch was in town with Jimmy, he'd be in the audience. Wow. You know? And one night, uh, it was at the Vanguard, the Village Vanguard. And, and after the show, he said, you know, Jimmy's in, in the studio. I said, well, you're, you're not in the studio. He said, yeah, I'm here. I'm listening to Tony and you, you know, but mainly Tony. He's talking about Tony <laughs> Williams, by the way. That's who he's referring yeah, to. Yeah, Tony Williams. Yes, the great, great drummer. Uh, so I, so he, said, he said, yeah, it was Buddy Miles. The drummer called Buddy Miles was playing with him. It was just a bunch of musicians. And so why don't you come by? So I went by with uh, with uh, Dave Holland and and uh, Larry Young, the, the late great Larry Young, Khalid Yassin, um, just to hang out with Mitch in the studio. And I actually took a guitar and uh, and and tried to jam in there. But there must have been five guitar players, <laughs> and different keyboard players. Who else was uh, on guitar? Who else played guitar that you remember being there? Oh, people that are unknown. I okay. didn't know any. Okay. I didn't know any of them. I get it. I get it. But I had this big, it was the, I, I had a Gibson Hummingbird, <laughs> uh, uh, which is a round hole. It's, it's, it's like a country western guitar with a Dearman pickup on yeah. it. You know, I, that's what I, I was using one on the In a Silent Way album with Miles, okay. and and I, you know, I knew I had to get I had to get uh, an electric real electric guitar because because Lifetime was getting loud and I was having problems with feedback, and that was a big problem in the studio because the in the studio with Jimmy and the and the and the drums and the basses and the and the keyboards, it was like ninety dB, you know, and I tried I tried to play it was. It was just impossible, but 
I got to I got to meet Buddy, who was you know because actually Jimmy was in transition between Experience and the Band of Gypsies, right. and Buddy was in the Band of Gypsies, and and Buddy and I became really tight. Uh, what a lovely guy, Buddy what Miles. He's talking about drum, Buddy but, Miles. Yes, yep. and uh, I mean what he could play some boogaloo, play, <laughs> amazing, amazing. In any event, so we started to hang out, and then one day he called me. He said, "Listen, we're play. We're at the garden tonight, Madison Square Garden." Yeah. And uh, and so I went. I went out to hang out, and, and I got to meet Jimmy again. Uh, but we never, you know. And I was just, I was just happy to meet him, and just, you know, I said, "What a what a pleasure, and, and, and thank you for for everything you're doing." But I think he must have he must have felt what uh, you know my gratitude to him as a, as a as, because what he did for the guitar uh we still hear it today don't we totally was he a fan of yours did he mention that he that you had meant anything to him as a uh... no you know he no we were sharing uh, the same um kind of manager a oh. guy called alan douglas yeah who, famous dude Yes, yeah, but in a bad uh, way too. <laughs> not, uh, yes, more, more, more like infamous. Yes, um, and I, I know, I know, he, I know, he didn't, uh, he, he wasn't, he didn't, he wasn't, he didn't do the right thing. Yeah, he was Jimmy. known for taking Jimmy stuff and re-recording it with people afterwards and releasing and, and it. And yeah, he did the same with me. He did the same because I had two albums to do, and and he just chop it up and do whatever he wanted. But I remember there was a big. Um, when would that be? Twenty-five years ago, one of the anniversaries of Jimmy's uh, Jimmy's passing, I think. Uh, we, and we went up to Seattle. There was a big there was a big show up in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Mitch was there, and uh, so Narada was there. Michael Walden was there. A bunch of other people, and we were all we were all just hanging out and playing, and. Uh, and uh, there was some guy, uh, some some Seattle band. I don't know where it was, but you know he went he went on the microphone. There's a lot of people, and he, he went to the microphone and just said, "Fuck Alan Douglas." <laughs> <laughs> so I'm quoting. Uh, that's not me, but but uh, I thought it was appropriate <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh dear, that's a great what story. You, you know what else is funny on the uh, list of, because their website is pretty cool. If you go, uh, if people Google and check out the Montreux Jazz Fest website, you can see a lot of John's because you can look up John and then see all of his gigs through the years. Uh, they have them assembled there. And then you can see other people who were on the bill throughout the years at different times. And one of the bands that I saw in there that over the years, and I've been, I'm so grateful for the many times we've gotten to talk, but one band we've never talked about. And they have some really good musicians in there, and they played at Montreux, or they were on the Montreux list, at least, for one of the years, and that was Led Zeppelin. So I'm thinking about Jimmy Page and John Bonham in particular from that band. Do you have any connections with those musicians, that band, any stories, any time seeing them, being around them? Uh, oh, yeah. Well, we go back <clears throat> long before Led Zeppelin. Yeah, I mean, Jimmy, I met Jimmy, I must have been 19 or 20 and he would be 18. Wow. And uh, yeah, and we were we were living in, in, in the, this suburb of, of London, south of London, you know, and, and uh, you know, and I showed him one or two things on the guitar. You know, I never taught him guitar or anything like that. I, I was I was learning myself, but um, but he was he was very very cool, a very sweet guy, and uh, and we subsequently met. Years later, when we both became studio sharks, you know, right from like the mid '60s, you know, there was this explosion in the pop industry. I mean, the Beatles did it. You know, they really helped it. They were they ignited it. The Stones and all those Amer uh, English bands who who were who were making it big in America. Right. Um, so, uh, if you could read music. I mean, you would be busy from 9 a.m. till 9 p.m. As a session you know, musician. Just, this, just, yeah. I mean, it's made, just pop, basically. But it was an explosion of music. And Jimmy, we would run into each other. And and then I I got to know, I was in a band, um, was kind of a solo R&B band. 
with a singer called Herbie Goins in the nighttime. I was a nighttimer. <laughs> anyway, and uh, it was uh, and the bass player was was uh, John Paul Jones. Oh, whoa! <laughs> so yeah, we and we we lived together. Uh, we lived. We were neighbors, so we we started to hang out, and uh, and then I, I was helping him uh, with some of the harmony, you know, some harmonic things, more jazz because I was much more interested in the jazz music as 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 pop, you know. But um, but he was he was very cool. But it was I was very happy to see John Bonham. I never met. Wow. Uh, Robert Plant, I never met either. Wow. Uh, but but I know uh, I was in. We met up once in L.A. when 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 Zeppelin they had a concert there and uh, and and so and. Um, John Paul called me and, and uh, he said, so uh, why don't you come to the concert? So I went to the concert. What year is this and, approximately? Oh, man. No, you know you. know you got me. Oh, it's so important, though. Uh, what do you remember? I'll help you if you can remember any details of anything that sticks out that you saw that was there, that they have bad company. Uh, was bad company opening? No. No, no, I didn't see an opening band. Okay. Was that the Forum? Um, LA Forum? Big venue? Yes, I think so. Okay. Yeah, it was a big, it was a, yeah, there's, there's a big audience there, no? Yeah. It was a, it was 18, a 18,000 seat kind of place. So what happens that you can remember? It, it must have been somewhere like maybe the, the mid 70s. When they were huge. They were really big then. Oh, so. yeah. Oh, they were huge. Yeah. 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 I mean, they were selling millions of records. And you're backstage I mean, hanging out with cream him. Cream did. Right, right. What cream did, you know. And that I speaking of cream, because um, <clears throat> of course I was associated uh, so closely with Jack and Ginger. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but in, in those days, in the early 60s in London, was a nice time because the, basically there were two clubs. There was the Flamingo Club with, where I was playing with Georgie Fame. And then there was the 100 Club, which was a blues club which was about 300 yards away. Oh, convenient. <laughs> yeah. So, so you know, and there was this iconic figure called Alexis Corner. Oh, yeah. Who was a blues man, but he loved to have jazz musicians in his band. And he had everybody in his band at one point or another, including me, including Mick Jagger, um, in including Graham, Jack, Ginger, uh, Long John Baldry, he was in the band. Charlie Watts was in the band. Wow. Dick Hessel Smith was in the band. You know, and Graham Bond was in the band. This is where we all met. And I know, and, and um, oh, uh, so the, we would be mixing all the time. Uh, you know, people coming in to, to, to jam. You know, basically, they would come over to the Flam to Flamingo Club because from midnight, the Flamingo Club became the all-nighter. Right, right. You know, so we'd play in the evening and then we play after midnight as well. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was a, uh, a great, you know, as long as you didn't mind uh, getting little, very little sleep, it was, <laughs> it was a really good, it was a really good situation. And, uh, um, Anyway, this, so yeah, I'm wandering down Ramley Lane here a little bit. So, I'm loving so. it. I'm loving it. Are you <laughs> kidding? It's like the best stuff in the world. That's what people, you know, another guy, because, well, the mantra, again, John has this mantra years wet. And this, when you look at the mantra website, you realize how long you have been a part of it, how many different kinds of folks that, that you ended up there. In 2016, you performed there with the Fourth Dimension Band, but it also looks like one of your many times playing there with Carlos Santana. How many times have you played there with Carlos? And maybe that's an association that I don't think we've ever talked about. And he, you know he has a house here, so that's a real good one for our local audience. Yeah, I know. Actually, I just, uh, we've been in very close touch the last week. Oh, really? And of course, I know Cindy, his wife, very well. Right, you played on her new record. A long time. Yes, yes. And we've jammed uh, there uh, we've jammed in California. We've jammed in 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 Montreux. Of course, they played Montreux. Uh, 
but we've been in touch in the last in the last week because uh, I have a I have a piece I want to record with him and Cindy. Oh, wow! And and I just uh, I just sent him an MP3 and and so we're going for it. <laughs> so, but you know he just came out of COVID. He was he's he's testing negative now, but and he had heart but, surgery uh, too, which is real heavy. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he had heart surgery. Yeah. Oh my. Yeah. He did. So. But he came out of it good. He's yeah. on top of it. I mean, yeah. I mean, I uh, we were. I was just talking with uh, Aaron from the man from uh, Jensen, their management uh, or their his publicist about getting an interview together. And so it'll be. Yes, he is coming out of it. So fingers crossed. I mean, he did go through some pretty heavy surgery. Um, and uh, and I was just thinking about like because you also played here with him. If I'm not mistaken, it was 1973. You played yeah. here at the Blaze, though. But when you think back, when when did you first run into the cat? Like, how did he enter your life? If that is something that you remember, because you've spent so much time. Well, with well, I mean, physically, uh, I think it was the first time we played in California, in Southern California, and we played in L.A. and and uh, we finished the. the the gig and and uh, come backstage was Carlos Santana. I said, "Wow, nice!" And he he just loved the band. He loved that band. Well, I loved that band too. A lot of people loved that band. And in fact, because we had a number of gigs, we were we were in, of course, we were in San Francisco, but I think we were in in uh, in uh, Santa Barbara, I think we had, what's the capital of in California, state capital? Los Angeles, uh, oh, uh, Sacramento. Yes, um, we had a number of concerts and he came to all of them. And, <clears throat> and you as know, a and fan, the, so, as a fan, you hadn't played yeah, together just, yet. Just, just, uh, just uh, you know, he loved the music. Huh. And I was really happy to see him because, you know, I mean, Santana already, I mean, that was. Uh, wow. He was he was already well known, as, and especially what what he did in uh, Woodstock at, at the Woodstock concert. You know that that really just opened the world up for him. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was yeah, it's great. You know that Latin thing because I love that side of the uh, of, of his music. In any event, so we got we got pretty tight and you know he was because don't forget i was deep into my spiritual trip at that time three right? chin more yeah no i mean i'm still deep into my trip but but uh you know i'm not with uh, i don't follow his particular way you know i which i haven't since 75 but uh uh i have to i have to extend my gratitude to him as, as a teacher from because i wouldn't be who i am today without the impact of those five years I spent with him. And you shared and that with went, Santana too. Well, yes. I mean, he, he became very, very interested in, in what I was involved with. And he, he actually partic participated at a certain point. But <clears throat> before that, uh, we'd become really, really good friends and, and talking about the deeper things of, of life and, and music. And, and one night, I uh, I was back in New York and I had a, I dreamt about him and I dreamt we were playing together, and so I uh, I called Clive Davis the next day who was who was the boss of, of CBS that yeah. that day at that time yeah and and I said you know Clive I had this amazing dream me and Carlos were playing he said let's do it let's do it <laughs> so, so so we did love devotion and, surrender this is it yeah exactly that's what we did. And and then we hit, we we hit the road. We we we, we did concerts. Uh, that Came was the to Hawaii. One and only tour we, we but we did. Right. Um, but oh, of course, over the years, we you know we run into each other. We talk to each other. We write to each other. And uh, just this this very recently, um, I mean, of course, as you know, I recorded with on Cindy's album. Mm -hmm. You know, it was she and I, we go back, I don't know how many years either, um, 30 years at least, I think. Um, but I had this, I've got this piece and and uh, and so they're real excited about that we do something together. And so am I, because it's, you know, there's, there's something happens when Carlos and I play together. Oh, yeah. There's something happens, you know, and Cindy, she can boogaloo those drums. So I'm I'm very happy about about uh, 
participating and already it's like well well you know should we make an album <laughs> you know wow <laughs> so so uh, you know we will see we will see i mean you know you know about the, the demise of the record industry you know we had we we were in the golden era and uh amazing and for for which i think we'll be forever grateful but it, there's a whole new world out there now you know you have to think carefully if you're going to make an album you know are you going to break even right you know is, is that is it's that is that precarious now it has a whole so, different approach i mean did you ever can't connect with lenny kravitz is that where you first saw her i'm assuming doing her work when you were uh, how did you get in touch with cindy was it through that no, I met Sandy through Wallace, Wallace Roney. Oh, the, oh, the music the okay. player. Yeah, who just passed yeah, from sorry. COVID, actually. Yes, yeah. Yes, very sad. Wow. Uh, because he was very dear to me, Wallace. What a beautiful trumpet player. And he was also Miles' favorite, too. Okay. He was a beautiful guy. And I had yeah, just one night a long time ago. I don't know. I don't even remember what band I was with. It might have been Shakti. It might have been... Uh, of the free spirits uh no before the free spirits in any event um i saw say and i saw and i heard a play it's this girl is swinging wow you know? this is before kravitz then basically oh yeah you're talking to, you're talking to an old fellow here <laughs> dave <laughs> <laughs> What a great memory, yeah. though. But that helps to show her showcase her career in a way that I don't think people might appreciate. I guess. Mm. Well, I mean, every, uh, um, in the jazz community, she was the jazz drummer. She is a jazz drummer. Yeah. Of course, she can play R and B, shuffle, you know, rock. Of course, because like most com competent musicians jazz musicians it's they can move into that genre pretty easily um but uh it was dennis chambers uh, dennis chambers yes oh. and i know i always i'm just i should use their family name so <laughs> instead of you, you having to put that in so anyway i know um because dennis and i we go back many many years and and i know uh at one point we were playing in San Francisco with the Free Spirits with Joey Di Francesco, mm -hmm. um, and and Carlos came down to see us, and 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 he started talking to Dennis, and I could say he's head hunting, oh. you know, <laughs> he loves Dennis, yeah. and in fact at one point Dennis went with them, and Dennis also I think he was the one that, that actually one day uh, introduced Cindy to Carlos and um, oh wow dennis chambers I, the drummer and so wow. yes 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 dennis dennis chambers the wonderful what a wonderful musician and you know the cut on on the mantra album mm. with him and, and and joey unbelievable and and that piece this it's a collar blade piece sing me softly of the blues it's killing well, you know what i mean I like the one, you know, my favorite of all these jams is that tribute that you did to uh, to Paco, which is from a more recent record, and then that live version is on there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the, the to get the two of us together because we that was one just tour we did as a duo in Europe, and we had we made a stop. I'm I'm really happy we made a stop in Montreux because. Claude recorded it, and, and we've got it on the album. In fact, we've got two pieces on the album. And I miss him, Dave. I mean, you know, we go back to 78. In fact, I'm looking at a picture of him right now that was taken with the first guitar trio, Larry Coriel, is on it. It's, uh, you can't hold it up for the camera, can you? Is it? Is and, uh, it, you know, it if no, it's secured, it, no worries. It's a, no it's worries. A big one. It's I a collage it. of photographs. <laughs> okay, I get you it. Get, no, it's one of the old ones because it's <laughs> one from 1970. It's with uh, Tony Williams' lifetime. But wow. When Jack Bruce joined, he came in in, the, in in 1970 and stayed till the end of 1970. There's a photo of 1973 with me with Sir George Martin in the studio. Making Apocalypse with the London Symphony Orchestra. What so else I got is a up photo there? with me and Dave Sanborn, wow. another wonderful musician. Yeah, yeah. And down here, 19, 
19, gee, it must be 1979. Paco, me, and Larry. Larry's got hair down to here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I miss him too. He was great. Jeez, Larry Coriel him. was an amazing, amazing guitar player. And the thing about Paco that's worth mentioning too, because we're talking about other people who have been part of your life at that Montreux over the years, this new Montreux years collection from John really sums up a lot of uh, just a taste of many, many years. But another cat that you played with Paco there, and that was with Al, because I know you played with Paco and Al in at least 1996 for sure, correct? Oh, oh yeah, no. Well, we well, you know, the problem is around 1980. Is uh, you know, Larry, Larry, you know, he was having some, he was having some issues with his health, and and it it was it, it was difficult. And, and at that point, you know, because we'd already gone on tour, but, and, and we'd done actually two European tours. It was really very successful, and we loved playing with each other. Um, together, and uh, so uh, and, and Paco says, "Well, listen, I've re I've recorded a piece with Al on on I think on on his record on Al's record." He said, "Let's bring Al in, and uh, and I can, well, the rest is history, isn't it?" And you had never um, done anything with him before that. With Al, yeah. no, had no, met no. him, nothing, no, no meeting him. I'm saying, oh yeah, I'd met him because okay. he he I, I he'd come to some Mahavishnu orchestra. Uh, concerts, uh, you know, on the East Coast. I'd seen him a couple of times. Yeah, oh, yeah. And uh, but that uh, that really took off the guitar trio. Really right. took off. Yeah, I know. We there's nothing of that on the Montreux. Um, maybe there'll be volume two, Dave. You is is that a possibility? <laughs> is that because that's sell what enough I, records? That, you know? <laughs> I honestly thought for sure the way it was set up. That's funny you said that. It kind of looked like maybe you were because there's so much. Right? Like as you point out, how could you possibly? There's not even there's no not one Shakti piece on there. None. You know. And there's two years you played there. Plus you and did we, the. You, you we've did been the, there. We've been going there since '76. Yeah. Yeah. In 70, I know, 76, 78, 79, I think, eight, during the 80s. 99. The 90s. Yeah, there's a 99 one there, too. Yeah, and, the, and already in the tw in the 21st century, we've been there. Anyway, well, we'll see, you know, we'll see. It would be, it would be nice if it works out. But, you know, I'm, I'm realistic about, about the situation because every musician today is... Uh, is faced with the hard reality. You know, you have to do just that. That's the way it is. You know, Spotify rules or the other streamers and, uh, and you know, and the record companies are making handsomely and, uh, but the artists not so handsomely. You know what Al's been doing to make money? Maybe you could take this idea. So Al has this idea. You can see it online. It's the trip. So Al does these dinners at his house with his wife. Yeah. So they'll have a fan can spend five grand, 10 grand. I don't know how many thousands of dollars they they spend to do this, but a fan will buy a night at Al's house. Al, as you know, loves to cook. So Al gets in the kitchen and he cooks up a dinner and you get to spend That's time. It. Yeah, you spend time drinking wine with Al. He cooks you a dinner. Then you talk to him. You can kind of interview him over the dinner if you want. Talk to him about his career. Then after the dinner, he takes you up in his studio and he plays guitar for you. So I'm suggesting to you, it's like he's using it as an alternate source of income <laughs> during the and during the pandemic of all times, which is wild. I guess he tests the people before they come. I don't know the the little ins and outs, but it's neat, huh? What a wild idea. Yeah, that's pretty wild. That's you, pretty wild. Uh, yeah, I'm not so sure. You don't think I mean, you could I do like that? To, I like to cook. <laughs> I, I like to cook too. What, is, what do you like uh, to cook? What's your kind of cooking that you do? What's the? What's an well, example? Well, you know, we're, we're complete vegetarians, so so we'll, we'll we go Indian, you know, and there's a lot of lot of recipes in India. In alu gobi, alu gobi. Do you make alu gobi? Alu gobi. Oh yeah, alu gobi. This all all <laughs> kind. This is North Indian. Yeah, but. Um, we we like more the South Indian. South Indian uh, is really I mean let's say how many people are one point four billion in, in in India, so figure okay six seven hundred million are all vegetarian, <laughs> and they're all they're doing pretty good, but in South <laughs> India it's it's much more vegetarian than North India. Okay, and and so there are, there. Are, <clears throat> lots of recipes where they, the different ways to, to cook vegetables is marvelous just with the spices 
So we love that. And the pulses, of course, and the different ways to cook rice. But we also, because, you know, we're only 30 kilometers from Italy here. So sometimes we go into have lunch in Italy. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy. Recently? Uh, yeah, we were in Italy last week. Wow. It's only 30 kilometers away. Yeah, yeah. And but there's you... no borders anymore. And the restrictions are such that you're allowed to just go right in there and, and you can eat and stuff with the COVID. Yeah, it? I mean, if you, you, know, you go into a restaurant or a shop, you have to put a mask on, of course. Okay. Yeah. But in the street, generally, although still here in the street, people still wearing masks in the street, even though it's been lifted. You know, it's, it's people get, it's been going on a long time, Dave. I don't know about America, but, but, People are so kind of accustomed to wearing the, the mask in the street. It's like they feel weird now if they take it off. It's kind of groovy, yeah. You know what I'm saying? This, yeah. this, this is it's it's weird. But this human nature. Me too. You wear I'm it still outside. The mask in the street. You are, huh? Yeah, because because for the past nine months, obligatory, you know, to wear the mask outside. in the street outside. In restaurant, yeah, on anywhere, the street though, everywhere. walking on the sidewalk, anywhere you were. Yeah, but everybody does it, so it's it's become natural. In fact, what's weird is seeing people without a mask. Unbelievable! <laughs> what big changes! I can't believe it. And that you just popped that news on us about your tour being blown out, not till the fall of this year, but till the fall of the fall of twenty three. I know. I can't yeah. even. So you're not going to have any live anything until then. Yeah, yeah, I've got a tour in May organized. And what's that? I don't know. Be? Yeah, this is this is just Europe, and then um, so the festivals of July. So these will happen, you think? <sighs> you don't know. Inshallah, as they say. I mean, and the thing, and it keeps like ending. I thought like the numbers are really coming down. The restrictions. Are... They are. No, no. It's. I think we're on the way out, Dave. I think we're on the way out, but. Uh, it's you know it's slow because the numbers went up catastrophically didn't they i mean france 200,000 germany 180,000 i mean daily infections it was it was it was just outrageous and now we're much we're getting much lower now but i mean lower it's like 25,000 or you know but this is reasonable now but I just thought there were more tours still happening in there. Uh, it just shocks me that they would uh, that it would be so up in the air for you because there's so many. They had stadium shows back on the mainland. I mean, we don't have anything like that in Hawaii. Our restrictions have been much more intense, and we've never had any big shows since the pandemic. A, f a few small club shows with national entertain or international acts, but nothing, yeah. nothing big. But so when I hear about you postponing, so it's only one tour. Just to be sure, it's only the one. It's the one tour I saw online at your website. That's the one you're talking about that's bumped out for like a year and a half and then you have other tours that are still technically fingers crossed yeah there's, there's the there's european tour in may and then we'll do the some of the festivals okay. european festival because the europe is is in festival time is if it's happening we think it's going to happen we're much uh -huh. more optimistic these days than we have been since 2019 i mean you know Everything became very dark from February 2020, didn't it? Well, what you got to do is you call up Al and you say, you know, I just heard the craziest story. <laughs> say, I was talking to this dude in Hawaii, Dave Lawrence, that I talk to sometimes. And he told me that you're just making a truckload of dough and improving your cooking skills and sharing some of your music with people. And I want to know, what the hell are you doing, Al? <laughs> No, but why not? I mean, that's 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 a very interesting proposition, isn't it? And you I could mean, make he, Indian food. You could do your own kind of flavors. You could have your own kind of spin on what he's doing. Yeah, I do, yeah, but I'd like to invite people. Not, I, I don't really want to charge them. That's the problem. <laughs> you no, <know? laughs> I like to cook for people. You know, but make them pay for it. I don't know if it hits me it hits me in in the wrong way. That's all. Why not? Why not? I mean, it. I, I can dig it because it's like, you know, how many, I mean, I don't want to even get into the different, you know, because I have a number of uh, kind of protégé, you know, people I'm young musician, I'm kind of helping and not so young either, whether it's in the US or whether it's in Asia. And I mean, they're hurting. 
Hey, then why don't you do it like, okay, I have a better idea. So what you do is you get one of these musicians. Open a restaurant, <laughs> well, you No, know, you get one of your guys, your, your, your favorite musician who's hurting, and you say, all right, you come over. And you get like a little band together at your house. I'm looking at that room. It looks like you could possibly do a little a little ensemble there. Maybe in the in the people like Al has them come yeah. to see Al. Yeah, well, you see this the ceiling. It's, it's well, there's a four meter. I'm sitting in the mezzanine. There's a four meter room here, one of the old buildings. And What's you that about thirteen feet. You and exactly something like that. Or, yeah, something like uh, about twelve. Oh something. yeah, no, Shakti's recorded in this room. And you could then what you do is you could then uh, instead of you you charge people, but you'd be able to support these musician friends of yours who are in trouble. <laughs> It'd be like a, oh yeah, well we're supporting them anyway. I mean you know how many different different uh, fundraisers we've been doing since incredible since, ooh, I years. Would say April twenty twenty. Yeah, I mean with Carlos, Cindy, yep. with the Fourth Dimension, with um, I've done some solos. And really, that is just, you know, because a lot of musicians are hurting. But hopefully we're coming out of it, Dave. Let's stay positive. I'm really grateful for uh, your time. Always having you on the show. This was your, you told so many great stories today. Uh, it's to our dear friend, the great John McLaughlin, the Montreux years. Oh, thank you, Dave. Uh, did you have it's, fun today? Was this okay getting to uh, talk about all this stuff? I always have fun with you, Dave. <laughs> no, 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 because you because you know your music, you, you know, you're getting up there, so you know your history. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. And I'm way ahead of you. I'm way ahead of you. <laughs> Don't worry. I really do. <laughs> okay, <laughs> enough said. All right. <laughs> I do. We're so grateful to still have you, brother, and you're getting yeah, better. Yeah, you too, brother. You too. And you take care. And uh, love and blessings, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's great hearing you say that. <laughs> Big hugs, right, man. big hugs. Thank you, John. You're a wonderful cat. I, I'm such a fan for life. It's been so many decades of loving your stuff. So I'm giving you big hugs and lots of gratitude. I think I'm giving you right back, yeah. Thank right you. Right back, Dave. God bless you, brother. Stay safe. Yes. Blessings, Dave. Take Good luck. Care. We'll talk soon. You too. Aloha. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Aloha, my friends. It's John McLaughlin here. I am back at Hawaii Public Radio, my favorite radio. It was a blast being on the Off the Road series with Dave Lawrence, but I'd rather be on the road, but this is good to be in Off the Road with Dave. Yes, National Public Radio is what I listen to all my years in America because it's the greatest radio. But Hawaii Public Radio, we need your support. I always supported NPR because they need it. They don't hassle you they don't bug you with this that and the other they just make good music good programs help out five bucks ten bucks seven bucks two bucks anything we need it npr the best radio mahalo